Yes, let's um, get started. Um, in regards to our discussion, we'll continue the dialogue, as we mentioned, on environmental monitoring. And um, one question that came in from Mary um, is, can you talk through the ready-to-eat? Um, for instance, is raw flaxseed a ready-to-eat product? Yeah, just so everybody <clears throat> understands what we've done this week, um, this month, I should say, is, is last month we were talking about the, the, the ready to eat, the, the environmental controls, um, and really the, 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 the importance of that. And it, it's, as we were going through that, as Jill said earlier, we didn't have a chance to get to all the questions. And as we were looking at the questions that we didn't get to, there were a number that um, I felt were broad enough for us to put back on the table and continue this dialogue around ready to eat. And, and environmental control programs, because not only is it um, a, a clear regulatory requirement, it is, it is still probably, if you're in that space of making anything that's ready to eat, and per this question, what is ready to eat, um, it, it, is, it is an ongoing and an important issue. Um, the... Um, so can you, this, this is a question from Mary, and she says, can you talk through ready to eat and is raw flaxseed a ready to eat product? Well, I, I think there's been many people asking the FDA, um, can you define ready to eat for us? You know, what are you thinking ready to eat? And um, so far, I don't think we've really seen a good uh, and clear definition that we can get behind of what is ready to eat. Um, the, the goalposts on ready to eat keep moving. Um, and I hate to use this term, but it really does fit with this to say it depends. Um, if we look at some examples, um, and, and flour is the one that, that I think we'll be most familiar with. Let's, let's talk about that just for a minute. Um, I, I think probably everybody on this call is, is well aware of some of the recent recalls that we've had um, from some very big flour companies, flour milling companies, um, around the challenges of E. coli, the, the sort that caused hemolytic uremic syndrome, STEX, um, in flour that had been linked to, to illness. Um, is this something new? We've always known salmonella is present in flour at low levels. Um, is that considered an adulterant? Um, and, and this is where the it depends comes in. Um, I think it's very evident today, in today's regulatory environment, that if you are making or producing, selling a product, and I'm going to use raw flaxseed per Mary's question, if that raw flaxseed, however it's being used by the consumer, is being, has been connected with, with an illness um, or with an outbreak, then the FDA are going to approach you like it's ready to eat. You'll be recalling that product. You'll be looking at having to, to try to control those risks. So um, when we look at regulatory actions around foods that may be determined to be um, not typically ready to eat, if there's a problem with them, then they are treated as if they're ready to eat. Now, that's one half of the equation. The other half of the equation um, and I was on, actually on a, on, a, on, a, on, a call, on a call yesterday with a company that um, mills a variety of different grains to make different flakes and flour products. And we got into this interesting conversation that even though they're selling their product as a, as a not ready to eat um, commodity, it is being used by some in, in that mode. It is being used as a ready to eat because it's being used in uh, in bars in certain situations, um, which are not further processed. So where we get into the FISMA part of this is if you are um, selling raw flaxseed as a manufacturer, um, should you be compliant with the environmental control program requirements? Should, should you have a, have a strategy in place for environmental controls and environmental monitoring? Um, and I think I think the, uh, I, the answer to that, and I'm using I think because it's, it, it, there isn't a clear answer in my opinion, is that if you are selling the product as not ready to eat and you are labeling it as not ready to eat 
and, and you are in compliance with the FSMA requirements in which you label it as such. For example, this product has not been processed to control pathogens, whatever language you're using, per FSMA, um, in, in terms of informing your customer, you're saying it's not ready to eat, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think you are, would be w within regulatory compliance if you said, well, based on our risk assessment, we, aren't, we, are, we, we don't feel we need to be compliant with an environmental monitoring program, FSMA. We're labeling it as not ready to eat. We're not treating it as ready to eat. Um, however, and this is where the rub comes, I think you can manage the regulatory risk that way, but per my earlier point, if that raw flax seed is then linked with an outbreak and it comes back to you, will you have FDA looking at your systems? Will you have them checking out your plant for salmonella, say in this case, in the environment? You will. They'll be coming looking. So I think you can manage the pure regulatory risk by labeling, et cetera, and being FSMA compliant. But my advice would be to look at your programs and, and, and see if for an industry best practice purpose, um, it would be wise to try to control the risks in the ready-to-eat part of the, of the facility. Um, and this is why this was such a great question, because there is no clear answer on it. And, and, it's, and it's all about it depends. And if you've got a huge milling plant, milling facility, it's, it, it, depending on how it's operating, it may be virtually impossible to completely keep dust away from the raw side and the ready-to-eat side. How far do you go with expenditures? Well, be judicious and, and, and think it through. But um, anyway, I've, I've rabbited on and long enough on, on this one, Jill, but it was such a great question because it just, it just it raises every, all, all these imponderables. So we should move on. Okay. No, absolutely. Um, I think um, what's just interesting to your part, though, is going towards that best practices in the in the state of uncertainty. Um, no, exactly. Right, right. And without prolonging this particular question, but but that is that is what it's about. And and we are looking at managing pure regulatory risk. Am I compliant with FSMA? Yeah, I can do that. But but am I doing what I need to do to to manage economic risk to my company or reputational risk with my with my customers? Yeah. That's that's the second part of every discussion.